Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Fee and this is Money Philosophy. Today we will spend a few minutes talking about Tesla. I will make a very short video today, but I wanted to update you guys on my thought on the stock as well as the overall macroeconomics environment. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I am a growth stock investor and a trader and I'd love to share with you my investing and trading journeys. Let's get right into it. So as you know, Senator Manchin said he won't vote for the Build Back Better Act, which inadvertently killed the momentum of the EV tax credit for now. Because as you know, Elon Musk does not want or need the bill to be passed. Uh, this would be more benefiting the GM and the Ford of the world and not necessarily Tesla. Um, this also means that a bunch of people who are waiting to take delivery of the car uh, due to the tax credit would accelerate uh, delivery uh, sometime in 2021 instead of waiting until 2022. Uh, so we have another 10 days uh, for the rest of America to take possession of the car, uh, knowing that the bill may or may not go through, right? So uh, within the next 10 days, I think a lot of people who are who have been on the fence about the tax credit and trying to wait for the tax credit, but really, really wanted the car, they will throw their hands in the air and say, let's just pick up the car, right? It takes a few days uh, for Tesla to get the car to their hands and Tesla won't be able to count that delivery unless the consumer sign acceptance uh, and delivery of the car. So. So I think that the 10 days could allow Tesla to make all of the paperwork and the procedure to happen, assuming Tesla's already have the cars uh, at the right logistical places to deliver to the consumers. Uh, the next 10 days will not give Tesla enough time to deploy vehicles from Fremont to say New York, for example, right? Because across, because cross country transportation could take a few days. Um, so, uh, in other words, if the cars are already slated to be delivered to the right consumers at the right geographic areas, and those consumers have been waiting uh, for the tax credit to pass, but have been on the fence, they will now just go ahead and take delivery and possession of the car. This could add to the bottom line as well as the number of delivery for Tesla in 2021. Although probably a much smaller number is not going to change Tesla from 900,000 to over a million vehicles delivered it could probably vary by about 10 to 20,000 vehicles in my mind. For my own vehicle delivery, um, Tesla did reach out about two weeks ago indicating that my car would be ready between um, the 29th and the 31st of December. Uh, I'm still waiting for more update. We may or may not make it uh, by the end of the year. As a consumer, it doesn't bother me one bit whether I will take possession in December or January, but for Tesla, they probably want to strive to get delivery done by the end of the year. So we'll see. It usually, like I said, takes a while for Tesla to to um, contact a consumer, get the vehicle in the right place, sign paperwork and stuff, stuff like that. And so far, I haven't heard back from them. We also have a tweet from Elon uh, yesterday um, indicating that uh, for those wondering, I will pay over $11 billion in taxes this year. Uh, this probably include uh, federal and state. Uh, this probably include federal and state. And, and a few of you have speculated that Elon probably already finished selling. That's why he announced the total amount of tax that he is paying here. Um, in, in my mind, it is really hard to speculate if uh, Elon does in fact finish selling, he probably uh, will be announcing via Form 4 uh, in the next day or so. Um, so I'm not entirely uh, keen on speculating. I know that the amount of shares left to be sold is roughly uh, less than 3 million shares uh, in order to get to about uh, 17 million shares. Um, so I'm not overly concerned about when he sold them or whether he finished selling them. If he does finish selling, the negative impact of the stock price due to the selling pressure by Elon will probably be muted in the next few days and weeks. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the overall macroeconomic environment uh, enable Tesla to move up, right? If you see a bunch of other growth stock moving down, uh, then necessarily Tesla would move down. Um, 
then Tesla would probably more likely than not move down with them. Um, so I'm not necessarily taking this as a extreme positive sign for the stock, although it definitely has lifted um, selling pressure from the stock if he does in fact finish selling all of his shares. Um, for right now, let's take a look at chart and see what it tells us. Here's the daily chart for Tesla. I want to zoom out a little bit so we can see that um, the last time Tesla had a breakout, it consolidated and then crashed um, and then trying to make it back, crash again, creating uh, almost like a double top or descending triangle here and then eventually continue to go back up and break out again with um, a different set of bullish news such as a Hertz order um, way back in October. So Tesla is the kind of stock that would go up like crazy and then correct or crash, right? So we've seen this time and again, and this is no exception. We have a triple top here, and sure enough, Tesla has been falling down. Um, I do see that uh, the volume for today is really low at 69%, um, and I do believe that Tesla has an RSI divergence here. Uh, while the stock price is going down on the daily chart, RSI has been moving sideways and lifting up from early December. So I strongly believe that Tesla is closer and closer to a reversal. I don't think that um, Tesla would be getting down to um, the 700s anytime soon. Uh, having said that, uh, the 100-day SMA, which is the purple line that I just added here, is right now at uh, $878. And uh, if Tesla moved down further to the previous uh, point before the major breakout, that would be $853. So it is entirely possible that Tesla would get back there. Uh, note that I eliminate the gap line since Tesla already filled the gap, so it is now irrelevant. Um, and I think in the short term, Tesla is finding, in the short term, I think Tesla is looking for a bottom and it will bounce at any moment now. It is possible that it would move down to 878, which is 100 days SMA before bouncing. Um, 200 days SMA right now is at 764. Um, I personally don't think it will get there uh, because there are a lot of bullish catalysts from now until the end of January. So um, moving down further, probably not likely at this point. Here's the hourly chart. You definitely see divergence on the RSI here. Although I have to be candid in saying that this is a descending triangle. Um, you can see this from the hourly chart here. With the strong support is right around um, $897. Um, so with a descending triangle, usually the stock would break down further, but now we have a descending triangle creating a very strong support at $897 with a very pronounced RSI divergence here. Um, so the possibility for tomorrow would be Tesla would touch the lowest point of today again, which is right around 893, and then start bouncing. Um, absolute worst is probably will get to the bottom pivot point, uh, which also coincides with 100 days SMA, which is at $878 before bouncing again. Um, I do see this RSI divergence here, and so I think reversal is imminent. Uh, imminent one day or imminent three days, I don't know, right? I just know the Tesla is looking for the bottom. So the daily candle doesn't necessarily look like a complete uh, bottoming candle. So a bottoming candle would look something like this. Either it has a two fail rocket launch back to back, hitting some sort of support, or it would have a fail rocket launch and then a bullish hammer also crossing right around at a major support area. That would be um, bottoming candle. Here, this looked like a continuation of the price action from two days before. Friday was somewhat bullish, but it ended the day very weak, and today was a bearish continuation. We were hoping that Friday was a initial sign of uh, reversal, and today would be confirmation. Instead, toward the end of the day on Friday, it showed a very weak um, reversal if it was even considered a reversal and today was definitely not confirmation of reversal so we're not yet at the point where we can say reversal will happen tomorrow but there are a lot of signs uh, both from the RSI level and the volume level for example 
while the stock is moving down, RSI is uh, moving sideways. The volume is very weak for a red day, so it's definitely not crashing anytime soon, right? Um, and we have a very strong support of 100 days SMA looming right here at $878. So for now, $878 is my temporary bottom. It may or may not get there this week. Um, so if you look at the 30 minute chart again, uh, it has to open right around yesterday lowest point or at least a gap down and continue to move down pretty drastically to hit 878. Um, and if it does get there, I think that would be a temporary uh, bottom right now. For me, um, I'm thinking of entering a call option um, and I probably will do so when market opens with a gap down. Um, so whether it's a $5 gap down, a $10 gap down, I think I'll do that. And if the, for whatever reason Tesla hit uh, $878, I might add another call option. Uh, but that's just my thought. Um, there's nothing to prevent Tesla from even falling further. Um, so it is a possibility. It's just not something that I um, strongly believe that it will. Right? I think two weeks leading into Q4 delivery result, Tesla will probably um, run up pretty drastically in the next couple of days here. So overall, I am still very bullish in the short term for Tesla. I'm looking at um, a potential bounce here any moment now. Um, and I think that uh, toward the end of this week and the entire week next week will be a good opportunity for Tesla bulls because I think the stock will start running then. Um, but uh, all the signs are there. Tesla just need to make an initial move and confirm it with a confirmation candle. We have neither at this point. So right now it is just an anticipation. Uh, do not go in a trade if you uh, anticipate something without any confirmation. I would definitely wait for confirmation first for me. Um, personally, I would probably take Take that chance because 100 day SMA at 878 is a very strong support. So I'll take a chance in my mind. That's an optimal point, meaning that it could go down further. It could go up. But as I stand today, not knowing the future, I think that's an optimal point. Right. Um, but I don't want you guys to follow me blindly, not understanding the rationale. And when the stock tang down to 850 or 800, uh, you'll have such a hard time with it and thinking that we picked the wrong point of entry. The point of entry will never be perfect. In hindsight, you'll know it's right or wrong. Right now, um, that's what I see and that's what I would enter for myself. Um, if you have any question, comment down below. I'd be happy to answer questions for you. Uh, if you'd like to have a direct line to me and ask me questions and talk to me on a regular basis about any kind of stock that you are trading, uh, feel free to sign up for my Patreon page, link down below, um, and that way you could have direct access to me. I will also um, put my market analysis or trade analysis on the Patreon page as well. Until the next video, thank you very much. Bye.